Hi, if you're watching this video, I probably posted a link to it on an iNaturalist observation of a common earthworm that you posted along with a disagreeing ID. And before I get into the topic of this video, I just want to say for anybody that's newer to iNaturalist, if you've only used the iNaturalist app, you might also want to consider checking out the website as there are a lot more features that you can use and learn from on the website. The data is also just so much easier to browse, so it's much easier to learn on the website as opposed to the app. So if you haven't done that yet, I really recommend checking out the website. It's iNaturalist.org. Another thing that I need to say is that I'm not an expert on earthworms in any way, shape, or form. I don't really know much about identifying them. I just noticed that there was an issue on iNaturalist with a specific uh, a species, the common earthworm or Lumbricus terrestris. Not even sure if I'm saying that right. The problem in a nutshell is that the auto ID or computer vision on iNaturalist is assuming that almost all earthworm photos and observations posted to iNaturalist are this one species, the common earthworm, again, uh, Lumbricus terrestris. Okay, but earthworm identification is very complicated and not straightforward at all. And to complicate things even more, it, it's not like there are only 10 species of earthworm in the world. According to Britannica here, there are more than 1,800 species of terrestrial worms in this same, you know, group, Oligochaeida. So as I'm editing this video, I realize that I'm butchering that really bad. I think it's Oligochaeida or Oligochaeida. Uh, but yeah, definitely not Oligochaeida. So sorry. Um, and I'll show you now how complicated it is to identify earthworms. This is uh, a guide that I found just by Googling earthworm identification. It's specific to the United Kingdom. And this is from Imperial College London in the UK. But you can see how many different species there are and all of these different factors that come into play when you're trying to identify an earthworm. So again, the issue is that this auto ID system is just assuming that all earthworms being posted are the same one. So now you know how complicated earthworm identification can be. And again, by the way, I just learned about this recently about how to identify them. And I, I know next to nothing about identifying earthworms, but back to iNaturalist. So unfortunately, this auto ID system has been trained by thousands of iNaturalist users that, you know, when they post their picture, iNaturalist makes that suggestion and they say, yes, that is what this is. Yes, that is what this is. And there are even people who come in and agree, look, yeah, that is what you saw. That is what you saw. So it's basically reinforcing iNaturalist's incorrect identification of this common earthworm and it's making it think yes this is exactly what all of these pictures that they're showing me are they are common earthworms lumbricus terrestris okay so what i'm trying to do now is i'm going through all of these observations and i'm adding disagreeing ids to say hey auto id or computer vision you know that's not correct this is not what it is let's drop it you know back to this oligo chaeda or oligo chaeda chaeda i'm really not 100 percent sure about how to pronounce it so does this mean what you saw was absolutely not this common earthworm Lubricus terrestris? Uh, maybe, maybe not. I mean, it really depends. It, this is a very widespread species, but it's not spread out throughout the whole world like it shows here on the iNaturalist observation. By the way, just to be clear, this is a widespread issue. It's not only this one earthworm species that has this issue. There are, plant, there are plants, there are other organisms, insects that also are misidentified. And, you know, it's kind of like the auto ID has been trained incorrectly to think, yes, this is this species, even though it may not even be found in that area. So what I'd like for you to take from this video is that the auto ID's work is really, it's always important to check it and make sure that it's correct right? You know, looking it up on your own online or getting a field guide, whatever way that you can check the work of the auto ID system. And this will also help you learn more about what you found. So in this particular case with the earthworm, if you really want to find out, hey, what species of earthworm did I see? You can look up, you know, wherever you're from and try to find a guide, right? The thing is with earthworms, they're just very poorly understood, I guess. They're not very well studied. And so you might not find a whole lot of information for your area. I'm from Florida. And I was able to find some information about earthworms in Florida and out of the more than 51 species that have been recorded, according to this University of Florida uh, document, it, it did not mention at all that Lumbricus terrestris, right? Even though in my state, there were over 600 observations of Lumbricus terrestris. So just going back, I, I wanted to show kind of how the, the this organism is broken down and why I'm specifically identifying it as Oligochaeta 
instead of, you know, confirming the identification or what. So if you go to iNaturalist and you click on any species, you can see uh, there's a breakdown of the taxonomy, which is how the organism is classified. So you can see the way the common earthworm is classified. It starts with the kingdom animals, right? Animalia or animalia. I'm not even sure how to pronounce that. Okay. Uh, the phylum, the class, and then the one that I'm identifying it as is the, the subclass. Because I think, you know, all of these that I'm looking through, the majority of them can probably safely be identified as this subclass oligocaeda, right? Or maybe even the family Lumbricidae. But after talking to a friend of mine on iNaturals, I decided, you know what, let me just go with uh, oligocaeda just to be sure. All right, this is a very handy feature, by the way, that you may not have known about. I think you can do it through the app, but it's best done through the website. And you could type in, you know, I'm just going to type in a, a very common species of bird here in, in Florida, the palm warbler. And if I was curious about how that organism is classified, you know, you could type in any organism, click from what you get in the options, and then do this and kind of learn about, you know, and you can click map and you can do a bunch of stuff here, but that's not the point. Okay, so it's just a really useful feature that I wanted to talk about. Uh, anyways, thank you for watching. If you are new to iNaturalist or have been around for a while but you want to learn more, um, I have this really cool PowerPoint that I put together and there's also a video that goes along with it. So I have a link to that in the description of my video. And I do also have a couple other videos that I've posted. I'm going to be posting more iNaturalist videos in the future. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you learned a little bit more about how iNaturalist works and I'll see you next time.